Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Nunley Math. Thank you so much for joining us here today. I am Aaron Nunley, and we are coming near to the end of our discussion on ratios, proportions, and proportional relationships. In our last couple videos, we talked about the fact that proportions can be used to solve problems involving similar figures in geometry. We said that as long as those figures are similar, we know that the corresponding or matching sides will be proportional. And then in the last video, we talked about how that can be used to take measurements when taking measurements physically with a ruler or a tape measure or using traditional means might not be practical or easy. Today we're going to talk about scale drawings and scale models. This is yet another application of ratios and proportions. Because we already have so much experience with, um, with working with the means extremes property and working with similar figures, my expectation is that this will probably not be the most difficult of the lessons we talk about, although there are a few odds and ends I do need to make sure I point out. If you have not already watched the similar figures lessons, the indirect measurement lesson, and the proportion lesson where we discuss the means extremes property, you need to make sure you have a firm understanding of those ideas before watching this video. So let's go ahead and dive right in. When I use the term scale model or scale drawing, you need to understand a couple things. A scale drawing or a scale model is used to represent an object that is too large or too small to be drawn or built actual size. The lengths and widths of a scale drawing or scale model are always proportional, there's the keyword, to the lengths and widths of the actual object. If the model's lengths and widths are proportional to the real object's lengths and widths, we could say that a scale model or a scale drawing is a figure that is similar to the original. Some of the most common examples are maps, blueprints, model cars, and sculptures. So over here I just grabbed a picture of this looks to be some kind of luxury resort hotel. If I were an architect and I were designing a luxury resort hotel, it would not make sense as I was trying to convince someone to build this or as I was trying to work out my design, it would not make sense for me to build this actual size because if I built it actual size I would be spending millions and millions of dollars on concrete material and land that may end up not being what people want so instead what I do is I design a scale model or a miniature replica of the resort that I'm that I actually want to build so that people can get an idea of what it will look like without investing millions and millions of dollars in resources to make a real one so it looks exactly the same it's just made smaller so that it fits on on the table and so that it is much much less expensive. Now a scale model always gives the rate model to real, model to real, or sometimes we use the term model to actual. It's the exact same thing. So it is a ratio or a rate depending on what the units are, but we're always comparing the model to the actual object. Now, scales should always be given to us in simplest form, which is consistent with what we've talked about with um, other types of ratios and rates. But here we need to keep in mind that our numerators will typically be a 1. So that if I were to say to you, a model of a 36-foot carousel is 9 inches tall, give the scale of the model, we would look at here and say, oh, okay, I want to compare the model to the real. The model is going to be 9 inches tall, and the real carousel is going to be 34 or 36 feet tall. So my ratio is going to be 9 inches over 36 feet, or in simplest form, 9 over 36 would simplify to 1 inch to 4 feet. Notice I didn't just say the scale was 1 fourth because I can't get rid of these units because the units do not match. Does that make sense? Now, if I have an artist who paints a mural from a scale drawing and the drawing is made so that 1 quarter inch equals 3 feet, this is an example of a way a scale can be written but not as a fraction. The scale is 1 fourth of an inch is equal to 3 feet of real 
uh, whatever they're drawing, real whatever they're drawing. So in this case, one quarter inch is going to match to three feet. Notice the question asks us to give the scale in simplest form. We don't like the fact that there is a fraction inside of our fraction. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to rewrite this so that my numerator is a one. Notice that one fourth to three is the same as a numerator of one and I don't know the denominator. You should recognize that this is a proportion and you should be able to use the means extremes property to solve it. We cross multiply 1 fourth x and 3 times 1. You get 1 fourth x equals 3. Remember we said to get rid of a times 1 fourth we need to multiply by the reciprocal. The reciprocal of 1 fourth is just 4 which gives us 1x equals 12. So if the model or scale that is given to us is one-fourth an inch for every three feet, that would be the same as one inch for every 12 feet. One inch for every 12 feet, and that would be the answer. Now, most of the time you're going to be given uh, scales that are fairly simple numbers to convert over to simplest form. Occasionally you're going to get something weird and you just need to know that, that all you've got to do is make one the numerator and then solve the proportion. Some students often ask me, what if I can just look at this and realize that 1 fourth times 4 equals 1 and just multiply the 3 by the 4 as well? You are certainly welcome to do that, but this is a method that everyone can use even if they don't recognize the times 4 at the beginning. How do you feel about that? Is that okay? Let's try a couple. A penny has a diameter, that's the distance across the middle, of three quarters of an inch. Suppose a scale drawing of a penny has a diameter of 12 centimeters. What is the scale of the model? Well, we're told the real penny is three fourths of an inch. The model is 12 centimeters. So I'm gonna put that in here. 12 centimeters is my model. 3 fourths of an inch is my real. I want it so my numerator is a 1, and so I can go ahead and solve that. Remember, the means extremes property says we can cross multiply. That's 12 times x, 3 fourths times 1. And then to get rid of tw uh, times 12, I multiply by the reciprocal, which is 1 12th. Some of you may prefer to divide both sides by 12. Remember, dividing is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. And 3 fourths times 1 twelfth, you have to multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators, and you get 3 48. Um, 3 48 simplifies to 1 16th. And I've got a, a, a slide, a little pop up that didn't appear here. So your scale is one centimeter to one sixteenth of an inch. I really don't like it when this happens. In fact, if this happened to me, a lot of times what I would do is I would go ahead and say, um, multiply both of these by 16 and make this into 16 centimeters over one inch and have my one in the denominator. We usually like to keep a one in the numerator, but if it's gonna be messy like this, sometimes uh, it, you are better off to just go ahead and ignore that. If you would, go ahead and try this next one on your own. Pause the video, try it, and then play the video to see if what I do matches what you do. I'm going to assume that if you wanted to do that, you already have. In a textbook, a picture of a gnat is three centimeters long. That's the picture. A picture is a type of model. A real gnat is about six millimeters long. What is the scale of the model? Well, let's see three centimeters compared to six millimeters. I want a one in the numerator, so I put my x in the denominator, and just like before, I'm gonna use the means extremes property to cross multiply. I get three x equals six, multiply both sides by the reciprocal, and I get that x is a two. Your scale here would be one centimeter compared to two millimeters. One centimeter compared to two millimeters. And there's your solution. That's not too bad, right? I don't think so. Um, there's that missing uh, pop-up. I need to move that animation out. I'll get that later on.
Now, there is a second term that is a little more difficult for people to understand. It is called a scale factor. You might want to circle this word right here. I'm going to do so on my slide. The ratio that compares the model to the real. The ratio that compares the model to the real. When we talk about scales, scales are rates, which means that the units can be different. But when we do a scale factor, our scale factor is always a ratio, which means the units need to be alike. So if I go back to example one about the model of the carousel, we had said that the rate or the scale was one inch to 40 to four feet. That is not the scale factor. If I would like to know the scale factor, I would need to take this one inch and four feet and change it so that the units match. Most of the time, it's easiest to take the larger unit and turn it into the smaller unit. So, for example, I happen to know that every foot has 12 inches in it, which means 4 feet is the same as 48 inches. I can rewrite this as 1 inch to 48 inches. Notice that now the units match, 1 inch and 48 inches. So my ratio, or my scale factor, is 1 to 48. Now, that's kind of nice because if the ratio is 1 to 48, if the units match, it no longer has to be inches and inches. I can use this ratio and I can insert any units I want. One foot is the same as 12 feet, or one mile is the same as 48 miles. The units no longer matter because whatever they are, if the units match, I could easily convert them to something else. Over here, this is the NAT problem. Notice that the NAT has a picture that's three centimeters and the reel was six millimeters. We gave that as the rate or scale one centimeter to two millimeters, but these units do not match. Since they do not match, I'm gonna convert them into a scale factor where they do match. Hopefully, you already know that one centimeter is the same as 10 millimeters. So I'm going to take this centimeters and I'm going to multiply it by 10 to make it into millimeters. This is 20 millimeters compared to 2 millimeters. Notice the units match. 20 over 2 simplifies to 10 over 1. Since the units match, I no longer need to use them, so I can get 20 over 2 or 10 over 1. I can now convert this into any unit I want. What we're basically saying is the model is 10 times bigger than the real, regardless of what units I pick. Now, I didn't mention this before, but this NAT problem is always confusing to people because in this NAT problem, the model is larger than the real. The reason for that is because a gnat would be too small for us to put a picture of in a textbook, so we enlarge it or make it bigger so that it will fit on the page uh, big enough for viewers to see it. And there's my nice little box around that. So here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to take just a minute, I want you to take each of these scales that I give you, and I'd like you to convert them to scale factors. I'd recommend trying example one with the video paused, and then playing the video or fast forwarding the video to see my answer before moving on to two and three. I'm going to assume you've already done that, and so I'm gonna work my way right through. Suppose the scale given for a model of the Statue of Liberty is one inches three feet. That is my scale. I'm going to give that as a fraction. I want to convert that so that my units match one another. So I'm going to take that feet, the larger unit, and I'm going to convert that to inches. One foot is 12 inches. So the scale factor here is going to be one inch to 36 inches or just one to 36. Remember, once the units match, we don't need them anymore. This could be inches, this could be feet, it doesn't matter once we have it in scale factor form. Example two, I have one inch is 42 miles. There's a little typo for you. One inch is 42 miles, so we're gonna convert that. 
I happen to know that one mile is 5,280 feet, and I happen to know that one foot is 12 inches. So if I have 42 miles, 42 times the 5,280 will tell me how many feet I have. And then if I multiply it by 12, that's going to tell me how many inches I have. This comes out as 1 inch to 2,661,120 inches, or since the units now match, it's a ratio of 1 to 2,661,120. Now, the larger the numbers get, the messier it gets, but certainly keep in mind that if we know the conversions, we can always convert the larger to the, to the smaller simply by multiplying through by whatever our conversion rate is. Last one, the blueprint for a skateboard ramp shows that it is drawn so that one centimeter represents six meters. What is the scale factor? There's your scale, one centimeter to six meters. I want those to match, so I happen to know that one meter is 100 centimeters. I'm going to multiply the bottom by that 100 to turn this meters into centimeters, and now my units match. Since they match, I no longer need them. My scale factor is 1 to 600. We got that? That can be just a little bit tricky. There again, the most important part is to keep the word scale in your mind separate from the idea of scale factor. Scales are rates, scale factors are ratios. Let's go ahead and use some scale models to see if we can solve some problems. A set of landscape plans shows a flower bed that is six and a half inches wide. The scale on the plan is one inches four feet. What is the width of the actual flower bed? Now, if I were to draw these out, I would basically have a small fake model of a rectangular flower bed, and I would have a large real flower bed. Once I realize that it's just two different rectangles, I can set this up just like I did the uh, proportions that I used for similar figures. If I want to compare the model to the real, I need to be given a scale. The scale in this case happens to be 1 inch equals 4 feet. Notice that I wrote that as a ratio. ratio 1 inch matches to four feet. I'm going to get rid of my uh, markers, marks here. One inch matches to four feet. That is given to me. The scale usually gives you both of your given items at the same time. We know then that we need to have a find ratio as well, and we already have our unit ratio. The question we need to ask is, do we know how big the model is? Or do we know how big the reel is? Here's what it says. A set of landscape plans shows a flower bed that is six and a half inches. The plans are six and a half inches. That means that we are given the model and we're asked to find the width of the actual. So that's our unknown. You've already done the hardest part of the problem. Cross multiply, simplify, and you're done. This is nice because our numerator is one. There's really no um, there, there's really no need to multiply through by the reciprocal because one times anything is itself. Your flower bed is 26 feet wide. Not bad, right? I'd suggest trying this next one on your own. The blueprint of a building is of a building shows that its height is 11.4 inches. Notice the blueprint. The blueprint is 11.4 inches. That's the model. If the scale is 1 inch equals 6 feet, there's our given ratio. Find the height of the actual. So when I set this up, I'm going to go model over real. I'm given that the model is 1 inch when the real is 6 feet. And I'm told that the blueprint or model is 11.4 inches. There's your solution. If you haven't already worked that out, I would recommend pausing the video and working that out on your own. I'm going to do this more quickly because at this point you shouldn't need a whole lot of help with the means extremes property. The challenge is the setup, not the solving. The solving should be pretty easy for you. 
Once again, pause the video, try these on your own. I'm going to start working them faster and faster, assuming that you were working them on your own and you're just checking your answers. When I describe it, you have a map. The map gives you a scale of 1 inch to 12 miles. That's your given, 1 inch to 12 miles. The distance is 165 miles. That's the real distance. How many inches would it be on the map? That is your model. Cross products. Go ahead and simplify using the means extremes property. You get x equals 14, so 168 miles on the the uh, 168 miles would appear as 14 inches on the map. Last one. This one might be a little difficult for people because the scale is 1 to 48. Notice that this is a scale factor. There's no units here. So if it's feet, it would be one foot on the model is 48 feet on the reel. If it's inches, it's one inch on the model is 48 inches on the reel. It doesn't matter because the reel is always 48 times the size of the model. So we can plug that in. We're then told that the reel tower is 986 feet tall. Since they gave us the reel, they ask us to find the model. Notice that they are both in feet because this is a scale factor. We know these have to match. You've done the hard part. The rest is just the means extremes property. Multiply by the reciprocal and your answer is 16 feet. Hopefully that wasn't too awfully bad for you. If you are familiar with the means extremes property, these should be pretty easy to solve. If you're unfamiliar with the means extremes property, that may be why you're struggling as you watch this video, and you need to go back and watch the proportions video. That's about three lessons prior to this one. As always, I do appreciate you taking the time to watch. I do wish you the very, very best of luck. Take care of yourselves, all right? Bye-bye.